I hope you're having a lovely day so far. You know, life in isolation has really taken us out of our usual day-to-day -day routines and has set us with a challenge of setting new ones around the duties of homeschooling, keeping the kids engaged and entertained, and of course, running a busy household. Coupled with this, the COVID-19 era has really shown us the importance of being healthy and having a strong immune system more so than ever. And what better way to keep the kids entertained and to build our immune system than exercise. Now it's really important for us to remember that engaging in regular physical activity is a great way to help manage our stress and strengthen our immune system. So the question is, how does exercise actually help? Well, for starters, physical activity actually helps to flush bacteria out of our lungs and decreases our chances of getting colds, flus and other illnesses. Now exercise also reduces um, the level of the, the body's stress hormones, uh, such as adrenaline, cortisol, and lower levels of stress hormones um, may actually protect us against illnesses. So for these reasons and so many more, we need to ensure that we are really including exercise um, in our daily routine. And um, lucky for us today, we're joined by our special guest, Jane Kilkenny, who's gonna help chat to us about this. Now, Jane is a, a health, and fitness expert with over 25 years of experience. Now, Jane is a pioneer in kids fitness and specializing in this field since 2003. Now, Jane is also a passionate runner and coach, having competed in events ranging from five kilometers right through to ultra marathons. And her favorite aspect of coaching is supporting athletes and watching their confidence grow, taking them beyond their own expectations in performance. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jane. How are you? I'm well, how are you? Yeah, we're really good and really excited to be chatting with you. Now, now, you've actually mentioned before, and I want to quote something that you've mentioned previously. Now, this is, this is your, yep. your words. Kids are not mini adults. Um, they have very specific fitness needs in relation to their physiology and development. Uh, you've mentioned that it's crucial that parents receive the right information from experienced professionals in this area. So can you just tell us a little bit more about, I guess, this point of view and this... Um, yeah, your, your opinion about this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as kids go through their growth phase, their physiological responses um, through that development are quite different to that of an adult. Uh, an, an easy example of that is kids with their thermoregulation. Their thermoregulation system it, one, in that developmental phase, it's not as easy for them to control their own body temperatures. So that's uh, one, of the, one of the things that we really need to be mindful of um, exercising with kids. They don't tend to feel hot and tired um, at the same time as an adult would. An adult will stop a lot sooner then a lot of kids will stop in that environment. So um, it's one of the things that when kids are going through that whole developmental phase from a very young age right up until physical maturity, um, their bodies react quite differently and we need to be mindful that we're not putting too much stress on their muscular system, their nervous system, their skeletal system. Because as they grow, they go through phases where they're more vulnerable to injury um, and those sorts of things. So, so that's why when I say kids are not mini adults, we can't just throw exercise at kids the same way that we can. And the guidelines for adults are not applicable to kids. We need to have a much higher level of awareness and be far more careful when they're developing. Okay. So without getting too technical, what, what's the, yep. the information around that that can basically help parents during this time? Um, look, I think, I think the most important guidelines are um, just monitor, monitor the intensity of the exercise. Don't try and get kids to uh, work too hard too quickly. Um, I'm also really mindful if parents want to take their kids out running, that's fantastic, but you need to be really careful in terms of how far they go. Um, you've got to look at um, levels of preparation. An adult can quite easily head out for a 5K run, but you've got to grade that through gradually for a child. A child might want to go out for a 5K run, and in most situations, they will manage that quite easily, 
but it's all about having the right information and having somebody with the right level of experience that can guide that exercise journey for them. Okay, so is it a matter of then just build, building to that then? Absolutely. It's a slow process. Uh, kids, kids have amazing levels of enthusiasm and I, I experienced with my own kids in terms of, you know, wanting to come out for a run and, and those sorts of things. But you just need to be really mindful that you take their progress really slowly and let their bodies adapt. Okay. Um, so I believe that acute exercise from as little as, say, 20 minutes a day um, can actually help improve our immunity as well as mental health. So do you suggest that in this scenario that parents should be starting with about 20 minutes a day instead of building up more? Or what's your, your opinion on this? Absolutely. Depending on the age of the child, um, in the primary school age or, you know, below, below eight, then you probably need to look at maybe doing even 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of higher intense rec intensity activity, um, working up to the half hour, 45 minutes, but just step it slowly. But kids, kids love to run, jump, play, hop, skip, throw a ball, catch a ball, and they're all those fundamental motor skills that we really need to focus on and keep them going. Um, it's, less, it's less important about worrying how long they're doing that for, but making sure that they're doing that in numerous bouts per day. Yeah. Keep them busy, keep them active. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, I know that research shows that anyone, adults or children who partake in regular physical, physical activity have a lower incidence of infection compared to people who have um, sort of sedentary lifestyles. And I think a lot of kids these days are, um, you know, understanding that screen time is a little bit more acceptable I guess with everything that's happening at the moment but still we have to be mindful of getting the kids out and keeping them moving is that what you're saying? Absolutely um, because of the circumstances at the moment it's so easy for parents to allow kids to have extra screen time because we're we're encouraged to stay at home and and those sorts of things and screen time can be whether it's tv ipad computer that can be an easy way to keep the kids entertained um, and the kids love it. But what we have to make sure we're doing is that our immune system and our entire physiological system, screen time is only a 2D experience for kids. It's, it's an interface where they're just engaging visually, um, but they need, they need 3D challenges and that's why they need to be moving, running, jumping, climbing, all of those things where they're actively engaging with the environment. Um, and that's far better for their physical and mental development as opposed to just staring at a screen. Yeah. Well, um, let's get um, chatting about the articles that we published for you. There's two of them actually. One, yeah. um, the first one is stay active to boost immunity and calm in crisis. Now, for someone who hasn't maybe read both articles or either of them, um, please give us a little bit of an overview what they're both about and uh, just what inspired you to write them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, exercise is proven to improve our immune system. Our bodies are designed to move. Um, so the more movement we have in our lives every day keeps our body working effectively and to its potential. Uh, so it keeps all of our systems working nicely, efficiently, heart and lungs right through to the nervous system, the muscular system. Everything works more efficiently when we're moving. Um, and that's why it's really important right now to avoid that temptation to spend too much time sitting um, in a sedentary environment. We've got to get everyone up and active and moving around and also having some fun. The other thing about the exercise in the family environment is have some fun with it. Um, regardless of what age your kids are at, whether that's active games, it doesn't need to be exercise per se, um, just active motion, uh, have some fun, jump around, play chasey inside and outside. Um, all of those sorts of things will keep everyone feeling better, feeling healthy, keep the immune system working efficiently. Um, and also just keep those stress levels down. Exercise is one of the best things 
and the most underutilized resource in terms of helping people with fear, stress and anxiety. Exercise is the absolute wonder drug in that scenario. Okay. Um, and in this, in this particular time, it's really important that we take that on board and use that to our advantage at the moment. So the question is, if we don't do that, um, what is likely to happen otherwise? If we're not getting enough activity, our body will work less efficiently. Um, our immune system, everything, there's some fantastic research with functional MRI. So they're actually looking at the brain um, under stimulation. So when somebody is just sitting there in a sedentary environment, staring at a screen, staring at a TV, any of those sorts of activities, there's very little brain activity. But once you add in some motion, the screen lights up and the brain starts to show much more stimulation. Um, and that all helps in terms of work, keeping the body working efficiently, keeping the brain working well, keeping our concentration levels up, um, and helping us just feel more vibrant and have more energy. Yeah. So overall, then, just to, to I guess to summarise, like, we, what in your opinion, why is it so important to keep our keep up our exercise and fitness during this time? Then, because of the circumstances that we're forced to live under at the moment, it's absolutely crucial that we keep our activity levels high. It's so easy, and particularly when the weather's terrible over easter we had a couple of really lousy days you know you look outside and it's gray and raining and you, you just feel a little more miserable um, but regardless of the weather we have to keep our activity levels up it will boost our energy it will help us sleep well it'll keep our immune system pumping along and it will also reduce our stress levels Mm -hmm. And exercise releases serotonin and feel good hormones as well. That does that sort of help us reduce stress levels? Absolutely. Exercise produces though most people have heard of the term endorphins and you know runners high and those sorts of things. Uh, a good bout of vigorous exercise produces those positive chemicals in our system and that automatically boosts our mood, improves our concentration. Uh, and just gives you that really energetic buzz that keeps you going for hours after you've finished the exercise. Yep. And in the, environment, in the environment we're living in at the moment, um, it's a great idea to try and get multiple bursts throughout the day. Don't think about this as just once a day option um, in terms of what, what is often our exercise habits. Yep. Uh, think about positive motion as much as you can throughout the day. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And yep. in your opinion, why is it important to include some family fun um, with this? Because depending on the setup of your household at the moment, everyone's feeling a little bit stressed and life is not normal where it's, you know, it's quite obvious that life is not normal right now. And because we are forced to live under the current restrictions, um, it's really important that we have some fun and have some fun together. Um, make it, if it's, you know, with little kids, make it a game. Older kids, have a, have a game of Scrabble or, or do something where we can all laugh together. Um, it can be, make it fun, make it competitive if your kids like competitive. Um, but just make sure that we're actually getting some fun in the family so that, Everybody has the opportunity just to take that edge off. When we're feeling stressed and, and frustrated and those sorts of emotions, it's really important to try and use exercise and activity to switch that around. And that's, that's, that's what I've talked about in that second article, you know, Calm yeah. in a Crisis, um, looking at ways that we can change our current level of thinking and looking to changing our opinions and our reactions. That's the most important thing. And particularly for parents, if parents are feeling under pressure, they're stressed, they've got to deal with homeschool now, um, there's so much going on and it feels like the walls are closing in a little bit because we're forced to live in confined spaces. 
Um, we need to look at how we're managing our own reactions and emotions because that will flow onto our kids. If we're, if we're constantly stressed, our kids are going to be stressed and we can't let that happen. Yeah. So in your opinion, how do you define mindset and then how do we learn to manage it? I've done a lot of a lot of reading and a lot of study on mindset in the last few years and I've I've found it's been hugely beneficial for my own outlook. Um, in this particular situation, like this whole COVID scenario has thrown so many curveballs into my life. Um, I I was supposed to have been in Antarctica last week running a oh, marathon. Get out of town. Um, no, and I, I'd been waiting and training for that for so long and I was so ready um, no way. and the race got cancelled and I, and I couldn't go. And like in that scenario, we sort of look and we go, well, you know, I, do you feel angry, frustrated, all of those sorts of things? Well, well, yeah, I could have chosen to react that way, but I actually chose not to. I've, my, my personal lessons and my philosophy at the moment is I've le I'm learning to remain calm and be patient in this situation because life hasn't stopped. There's going to be an end zone to this. Um, yeah. And we need, we need to manage our reactions and make sure that we're looking at our mindset because my, my mindset is remain calm and stay patient and positive. And that's, that's a conscious decision that I made um, when this all happened. So it is possible to look at your reactions, look at your thought processes and how that will trigger your emotions. And that's, that's what I refer to with mindset. We can control how we react to things that are thrown at us, both positive and negative. Um, obviously, in the positive scenario, it's great. We feel happy. We feel joy. Uh, life's great. But when things, when a negative is thrown into our life, it's crucial that we look at how that affects us from a physical and emotional standpoint. And that's within our control if we choose to manage it. Yeah. And as we've sort of noted so many times throughout the chat today, the exercise does actually help yep. reduce stress hormones, um, which it invariably will help um, with our mindset as well. So it's a win-win situation really, doesn't it? One helps feed the other, maybe. Abs absolutely. Uh, and that's, that's been one of the saving graces for me. Um, I'm, I exercise every day in my normal life, <laughs> but it's been really important to keep that exercise going um, throughout this, this issue. Just, just because life is different, it doesn't mean we can't look for the positives and find some, some fun and some pleasure from exercise every day. Yeah. And um, for, say, for example, on a rainy day where we can't go outside, what tips do you have yep. for an at-home cardio workout? Um, at, at home equipment, you can find almost anything. Um, most homes will have some sort of step. You don't need to have a two story house, but there'll usually be a step, uh, up to your front door or your back door. Um, so a step is an easy way to incorporate some cardio. You can just, you know, pop the headphones in and, and run up and down on the step. Um, skipping ropes are fantastic. Most homes that have got small kids or, or kids, We'll have a skipping rope. Um, you can convert almost anything in the house into some small dumbbells to do some resistance exercise. Um, another really easy cardio one is just squats. Stand up and sit down at the chair that you're using. Um, that's a good cardio and strength exercise all built into one. Yep. So there's so many options. Yep star jumps and then sort of even just step, like running with high knees and yep. that sort of stuff as well, yep. do you reckon? Jogging on the spot, doing any sort of step, you know, step movements, sideways steps, uh, squatting up and down, split squats, so stepping out to one side and squatting. There's a whole range of stuff you can do. Like you, you can almost, you can create anything in any environment. Run around your dining room table. Yep. run around the house yeah outside yep. or inside 
And what about resistance bands? I know that um, a lot of shops have actually completely sold out of all fitness equipment and bits and pieces. Now, resistance bands may be something that um, we can actually get our hands on, um, but people maybe aren't so familiar with them. To begin with, when I've seen them in the shops, there's usually a range of different colours. So can you just explain a little bit about resistance bands and what they can be used for? Absolutely. Resistance bands, depending on the brand, will come in different colours and the colours um, are the indication of the thickness and resistance of that band. Um, so there's usually, usually three to four levels in each brand. So you're looking at something that's, you know, quite light and easy resistance, working your way through to that heavier band, which is really quite challenging. Um, and with the bands, you can do a whole range of strength exercises. Uh, any sort of pull motion, just attach a band around some sort of stable pole at home. Uh, yeah. That can be the balustrade on your staircase. That's a super easy one. Um, so any sort of pulling motion is working those big postural muscles in your back. Uh, and then when you're pushing away from your body, you're working the front half. So you're working those anterior muscles, your chest muscles and those sorts of things. Um, so that's a really good thing to keep going. Um, any overhead motion, so that's working up through your shoulders. Um, you can add some bicep curls to that with the band. Just pop the band under one foot, curling that way as well. There's a whole range and there's some fantastic resources online that you can actually get a full body workout with your resistance bands. A lot of the bands actually have that information in the packaging. They'll give you a great workout. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. And yeah, resi resistance bands are one of the best home equipment pieces you can have. Yeah, because I think everyone's sort of really gone for the mo more common items and dumbbells and, you know, all those types yeah. of things at the moment. But, you know, maybe that's just something that is going to be um, more readily available at this time. Um, well, overall... Um, Absolutely. This has been a really great chat um, and there's been lots of like, sort of key takeaways. If you were to summarise, I guess, the key points for anyone watching, what would they be? The key points is life is challenging right now for all of us and it's really important that we keep our activity levels up so that we're staying active, keeping our immune system nice and healthy and also enjoying those benefits or the positive psychological benefits of exercise uh, helping to reduce our anxiety levels, uh, getting those feel-good hormones pumping through the body to just keep us that little bit happier and more healthy and also in the family environment, have some fun together, exercise together, uh, play games together, all of those sorts of things and you'll really feel the benefit from that. Great advice. Thank you so much, Jane. I've loved chatting with you today. For everyone watching, we've got the two... Pleasure in the introduction paragraph to both of um, Jane's um, articles. And thank you so much for sharing, I guess, all of your, your um, expert advice on the effects that physical exercise has on the immune system. Um, and I've definitely learned a lot today as well. Um, for anyone that's got any other questions for you, whereabouts can they find you? Uh, they can either jump on my company website, which is fitnessenergy.com.au, uh, or I've also got a blog site, which is janekilkenny.com. Uh, they can contact me directly through either of those resources and I promise I'll get back to them if they've got specific questions that they'd like answered. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for your time and I can't wait to chat with you again soon. Take care. Absolute pleasure, pleasure Rachel. See you Goodbye. later.